Do you want to be the person that everyone listens to and the person that everyone wants to talk to? Well, I have five tips to help you better your communication skills. Coming right up. What's up, guys? I'm Jamal, salesman slash entrepreneur, and I've been building rapport and crafting techniques for several years and training individuals on how to build rapport. And this channel is all about helping you master communication and crush conversations on a daily basis. So what is communication? Communication is just an exchangement of ideas or news, but in order to be a great communicator, you have to be engaging, informative, and direct. People want to leave a conversation knowing that you added value to them and you was well worth listening to. And I had to learn that the hard way, let me tell you. So well before becoming a salesperson and becoming a YouTuber, I was the guy, or should I say kid, that nobody wanted to listen to. When I told stories, they were boring. When I told jokes, they didn't hit. And everything that I did communication-wise was terrible. So what I used to do is spend a lot of time on my cell phone or behind the computer screen, and that was the best form of communication for me. But I was awful face-to-face -face interactions. So I want to tell you exactly what I did to overcome those issues and how I became a better communicator face-to-face -face with individuals. The first thing I did was shut up and listen. In order to be a great communicator, you have to first be a great listener. I have a good buddy who says you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. You need to listen twice as much as you talk, period. When you're listening to other people, you can respond appropriately to what they're saying and you can be more engaged into that conversation. You listen to great communicators, you can learn from them. You can learn how to engage other people. You can learn how to tell stories. You can learn more communication skills from them, period. An example of great communicators I learned from would be somebody like Eric Thomas, Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn, Dave Chappelle, Bill Burr. I listen to great communicators. Doesn't matter what genre they're in. I just like listening to other people speak. So that way I can develop my conversational skills through them. So when I was a kid, I had something drastic happen to me and it changed the course of my life forever. And I want to share that story with you. When I was young, I was bad. I got in a lot of trouble and I was very immature. I used to get suspended from school and my parents didn't know. And I also used to skip school and they wouldn't know. And when I skipped school or was suspended from school, I just spent my entire day at home having fun or what I would call having fun, relaxing, playing video games. Oh man, this is amazing. I was eating all the snacks and cereal in the house. And on this one particular day, I had something major happen to me. And this is what it was. So let me set the scene. When I was young and I used to stay at home doing this crazy stuff, I used to always be there running around in my underwear. And my mom used to always wonder why the food was going so quick. It's because I was at home all the time. And she didn't know this because I wasn't at school like I was supposed to be. On this one particular day, I decided that I wanted to learn how to pick locks. So I went outside of the house, locked the door intentionally. I tried to pick the lock of the back door of the house with a credit card. I was just trying to break into our house. After about five minutes of unsuccessfully trying to break into our house, I realized I was in huge trouble. I was outside of our house in my drawers. What am I gonna do? I can't explain this to my parents. What am I supposed to tell them? Am I supposed to tell them, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to tell them? Am I supposed to tell them that I got beat up and somebody took my clothes? No, that would never happen. Am I supposed to say that I lost my clothes at school? No, that would never happen. How am I going to explain not having on clothes and being locked out of the house? There's no way to do it. There's absolutely no way to do it. So I freaking panicked. I literally was running around the backyard in my drawers. I ran around the entire house checking every first floor window in my drawers for some way to get into this house. I was terrified. Can you imagine coming home and seeing your son laying in the backyard in the hammock with just his underwear on? What the freak? How did this happen? I was too big for somebody to beat me up and take all of my clothes. So what I did was I laid in the hammock for about five to 10 minutes and I just laid back there thinking like, man, I'm gonna get my butt and I'm gonna be butt naked and getting the butt whooping. I ain't got no clothes on. I don't have my backpack. How, <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so what I did was I finally thought about it for a long time and I checked every first floor window. 
So now my only option is a second floor window, but that's crazy. So I grabbed the trash can, I brought it to the first window, and that window was a lot closer than the second floor windows. It was our bathroom window. I get on top of the trash can, and I immediately fall off the trash can, just fall over. Because the trash can couldn't hold me, what am I doing? So now I have to pick up the trash can, and I attempt this again. I try again, fall again. Trash can can't hold me up. All right, and I almost broke the trash can. So I don't want to have to explain why I'm in my underwear. I don't have my backpack. I don't have my clothes. And they got a broken trash can. So I put the trash can down and I have to climb into almost a second floor window butt naked or in my underwear. So what I did, I mustered up all the strength and I pulled myself up. And I climbed into the window. I scraped up my entire stomach, like scratches and bruises on my stomach because of the ledge of the window sill. And then I crawled into the bathroom and on my way into the bathroom, I broke almost everything. But I was in the house. I can explain broken bathroom stuff. I can make up a lot for that. So now I'm in the house and I'm never, ever, ever, ever breaking into my own house again. I'm good. I learned my lesson. Everything was fine. I did not get caught. And I hope my mom's not watching this video. Which leads me to my second point, storytelling. Storytelling is king. You need to be a great storyteller in order to have the full investment of your audience. When you're telling a story, you want to get straight to the point. You want to set it up with a nice hook or premise. You want to make sure that it pays off big time and leave out the very specific, minute details. It doesn't have to be the exact story. You just want to layer in some big details that will help you get to the ending. And when you get to the ending, you want to make sure that ending pays off and that it was well worth the listen for that audience member. Okay, before we go any further, comment down below and let me know if that story was a good story, boring story, I totally lost you in the story. If you're getting any kind of value from this video, make sure you subscribe, you hit the like button, and also comment as well. The next thing is vocal projection. I had to pay very close attention to my voice because I had a tendency to be very monotone, which means I kept my voice at the same rate no matter what I was doing and I have to improve over that over the course of several years. When I say vocal projection, I mean your highs and your lows. You want to make sure if you're excited about something, your voice goes up. And if you're sad about something, you bring your voice down. You want to use that because vocal projection allows you to invoke emotions and it allows your audience member to know exactly what direction you're going in when you're telling your stories or what conversation you're having, you're able to convey appropriately your message. Eye contact is very important when you're having a conversation. People get distracted when you're distracted. If I start looking over here, y'all gonna wonder, what in the world is over there? If I look over there, you're distracted, I'm distracted, everybody's distracted when you're looking around. So what you wanna do is make sure that you keep your eyes focused on that individual so they know that you're attentive into the conversation that you're having. Or if you're speaking to a large audience, you wanna make eye contact with very specific individuals so that way they know that they have your full attention and that you're engaged in the information that you're telling them or what they're telling you. Now you can use body language, hand motions, movements to enhance your communication skills as well. So if you're talking to somebody and you're like rocking back and forth like this, that brings off a nervous vibe. What you want to do is stand strong, but you can communicate with your hands if it's very direct. You don't want your hands to be a distraction by doing things like this or doing things like that, but you want your hands to be very focused in on that conversation and it can help drive home points every once in a while. Any hand movement that you're doing is enhancing your storytelling as opposed to distracting from your storytelling. You don't want that to happen. So those are five tips plus a little extra to help you have better communication skills. If you found this useful, again, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching it all the way through. You have a good day. See you later.